So Raj was a healthy guy, no medical problems, had about a week to 10 days of headaches, a little bit of fever, started getting confused, and finally started having convulsions. It came and I was just holding and pressing and then wake him up to tell him, Raj, wake up, Raj, wake up, look at to me, look at to me. And then he was pulled down and then just the ambulance came and we took him in at the MGH. At that point he was transferred to neurological ICU for intractable seizures. And that's where I met him. We were trying to understand of how to control the seizures. We we're having a very hard time. Nothing was working. We have a series of different medications we use. Uh, when those don't work, we generally uh, resort to putting patients into a coma and then allow the patient to emerge from the coma to see if that has stopped the seizing. And uh, what happened with Raj is that even though we tried that on multiple occasions, um, the seizures persisted. When you see somebody uh, in that kind of situation for um, you know, 90 plus days. Uh, these patients don't do well. The body is not designed to be paralyzed, brain shut off for that extended period of time. The support of care has to be phenomenal in order to maintain somebody like this. One of our values of our unit is family-centered care and from day one, his mom, his dad, both of his sisters were always here. And so figuring out what they needed from us and what we could provide them. The way that I dealt with it was Okay, I, as his nurse, need to do whatever possible to give the team time to figure out what Raj needed. I spoke to Dr. Rizan, Dr. Cole, Dr. Rodenthal, um, and um, Dr. Cole had suggested potentially ideas of some novel drugs, including neurosteroids. And the interesting thing about this drug is that it works on uh, some neurotransmitter receptors that are uh, located on the body of the neurons rather than at the synapses or the ends of the neurons. And um, what we know about refractory status is that the receptors that are important at the end of the neurons seem to kind of disappear as the status goes on. This is one of the reasons why we think patients become refractory. But these other synapses elsewhere on the neuron persist. And this interesting drug was known to work on those particular receptors. I discussed the case also with a few experts in the field, including somebody in California, um, who was building a trial with neurosteroids, and um, um, also learned a little bit about how to get approval for it. We were able to get permission from the hospital and institutional review board and from the FDA to try this novel compound in this somewhat desperate patient. And we gave him this uh, treatment and um, we then uh, pulled him out of the pharmacologic coma and he seemed to uh, be responding. He seemed to have fewer seizures. And uh, over time, uh, we lightened the uh, sedatives that we were giving him and he began to recover. Electrographically, he started demonstrating that there is some normal activity building up Within uh, three days, he potentially opened his eyes. And I run to the doctor and I told him, doctor, doctor, uh, he opened his eyes and just everybody came and looked at. Very good day for me. The first day he followed commands, I think I cried. We have patients follow commands for the first time, all the time, but like, this was different. I felt like I was a member of Raj's family or his cheer team. I think one of the things that really kind of pushed us forward is the core nursing group that developed in caring for him and really started representing the patient and family. He has a long road ahead. He's cognitively well, but the physical work that we have to go into his recovery, whatever it is, is still a long ways away. Unsolvable case, pretty much but I haven't gave up because I have so many things I wanted to still. The first step is people need to care at each level. And after that, as long as there is guidance, structure, and ability to integrate multiple teams, I think that's kind of where success lies. Yeah.